Hi everyone. So today we I'm going to go over making a rag jacket like this. And all it is is strips of fabric sewn to a sweatshirt that is the base. And I just split it down the middle. I did bind the edges. Um, that's probably optional. Uh, the reason why I'm making another one, technically the quilter's cotton in this did fantastic. And I used 100% cotton sweatshirt and it has wore out to the point that I probably just need to cut these off. And um, But I'm going to make a new one to show you how I make this. And some of these flip up. This one's all made with fabric against the grain, so cutting from selvage to selvage. I do not recommend making one like that because what happens, the, the fabric gets, I don't know, it's fine. You can do it that way, but the fabric um, tends to knot up and string off pretty bad whenever you wash it. So... And my advice is to cut with the grain. And when I say cut, you're just going to rip fabric strips. You don't really have to cut. Um, I made my sleeves very, very full down at the bottom. And that probably was dumb. Where you want your fullness is probably going to be close to your wrists. And maybe on the upper back. I am going to demonstrate how to do this with intentional gapping of the strips and not uh, sewing them real close together. I'm going to get a good effect and believe it or not, this jacket I wear uh, year round, it's light enough that I can just wear it on a warm day if I get cold, but it also is warm enough that on the coldest cold of days, it's still warm enough. I might have to add a cap or a scarf or mittens, but this stays warm. I did not put any buttons on this. I recommend that maybe if you don't have a sweatshirt, that you buy a zip-up sweatshirt. You could use that. Um, <clears throat> you may want to make one of these flaps larger to where it will overhang the other side and then you make buttons. I have made three of these now and never had to button mine up. But I live in Texas, so it's a lot. Uh, the, the weather is less chilled down here, so do what works for your area. So let's get started. So here is the back of the jacket I was wearing. And if you'll look, I stitched a um, overlock stitch, and which is about a quarter inch. And some of these just wrinkle up and I could iron these down. And because I sit down or scoot down in my seat, they wrinkle back up. This is part of going with the, uh, with the fabric. So if you cut your strips from selvage to selvage, this will happen. Let me measure my strips. Let's see. Okay, I cut them about an inch and a half and they are already down to an inch. The next strips I'm making are a lot wider and because I'm cutting them with the grain, some magic will happen. Okay, for this project, <clears throat> you will need one size larger sweatshirt than what you wear because we are gonna be cutting on this sweatshirt and re-sewing it back together. The first cut you'll make is down the front. How you want to achieve this may be you bring your shoulders together, you fold it like so, and then you run a scissors up this size and split it open. You may draw a line and cut on the line, however you want to do it. 
um, you will also be cutting your sleeves. I have not cut my sleeves yet on this one. I wait until the right moment. So I will be totally cutting along this seam in the underarm all the way down through the cuff. Yep, I'm cutting through the cuff. And what that does is that allows the sleeve to open up to where you, you don't have to have uh, a free arm machine to sew your strips on. Now let's go ahead and split open or split our, our fabric. So incidentally, I have written up a blog post about how much fabric you need. So if you're doing a child size sweatshirt, you don't necessarily have to split the sweatshirt down the middle and so you can leave it all together and just sew your strips around um here is a strip that i have ripped and it doesn't show up because this is a partial strip so i took about a yard and a half of fabric and i cut about two inches in about every two inches yeah, this is two inches. And the good news is I did not use a ruler to do this because I'm just going by the pattern of the fabric. When you measure your pattern of your fabric, you'll be able to gauge where to cut to where you don't necessarily have to cut it with a, uh, specifically every two inches. You can do an inch and a half, however you wanna do it. I'm making all of my strips the same size so you cut this and then you rip and yes it is ripped on both for those of you who have ever made a rag quilt you always want to go with the grain you can go with the bias as well if you opt to go against the grain or from selvage to selvage you will have to probably use pinking shears on the ends of the fabric and let me tell you Using pinking shears on fabric kills my thumb right here. That is just a humongous workout for my thumb. So I do not want to use pinking shears. If you have a pinking rotary blade, you could also use that. But again, that is very time consuming because you will be cutting. You will probably be cutting more than a jelly roll's worth of fabric uh, when, whenever you're doing this. So that's a lot of effort. Do it how you want. You can get to the same destination, just a different route. So, again, that's the fabric that I selected. And here's my bolt of fabric. And I'm just going to spool some of this bolt of fabric off. And I'm going to cut it. And when I cut it, again, I've got lines on this to where I don't really have to go take it to my cutting table and specifically cut a straight line. I'm just going to follow my grid. I'm just going to cut my fabric off the bolt. And it does not have to be perfect. Again, this is a rag jacket, so the likelihood of you needing this to be perfect is zero. Follow that line down to the other side. You will remove your selvage edges as well. You're not going to use those. Those will not fray, so there's no point in using those. Okay. I have my piece cut. So as you noticed, I'm basically cutting a four patch width of this. So this is two inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the selvage edge. And I could remove it here, but I'm going to go ahead and come one up. I'm going to cut in about two inches. And I'm going to do this all the way down with the grain. And 
and that makes a nice change there. That's neat. So it's splitting the four patches into different. That 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 part of the jacket's gonna be cool. You'll find also by cutting your strips when you're sewing them to your sweatshirt, you'll find the pattern and it's gonna repeat itself in the same spot every time. And that's kind of neat whenever that happens as well. If you don't like that, you can always cut your strip a few inches off from it so that it staggers the pattern. You could use a very large print for this. I have used small print, medium print, and large print. You're going to get fun results no matter what you do. Okay, so I have this all cut. Now I'm just going to rip. All the way down and there's a way to do this quickly I'm doing this the long way so you can see and it has actually stayed true with the print of this to where it stays on the line which I was totally amazed when that happened but didn't really care if it did it another way I'm gonna rip your fabric pieces and when you get them all ripped, you're going to notice that they have strings like this. And you're just going to remove those strings. And the strings are going to get all tangled up, and it's fine. The larger you are, the longer you want your uh, original piece of fabric to be cut. I think I cut mine like a little over an, a yard and three-eighths or something like that. It just longer than um, longer than a yard and that way you will not have to change pieces you will have about just a little bit left over so that when you sew the circumference of the jacket that you're not constantly having to piece your pieces together but if you do that's fine now notice I have not frayed any of my pieces we are going to do that after we sew it onto the jacket. So let me get my sewing machine fired up and we'll go to that step. Okay, so here is the bottom of my latest jacket. And if you'll look where everything was ripped, it's slowly curving up. This will happen automatically if you cut the fabric or if you uh, rip the fabric. So let's look at the back side. I am doing a stretch stitch. You can opt to do, let's see, what are all the stitches on my machine? You can do a knit stitch. I think that's the stitch I did on my previous jacket. You can do a double over edge stitch, an overlock stitch, a, uh, let's see. You could do the applique stitch. Uh, you could play with your stitches on your machine to get the results you want. Uh, I find that by doing a stretch stitch, it, it has a similar zigzag and it doesn't have to be perfect. And that zigzag is enough for it to keep the fabric from unraveling, which it will not do because it will wash out. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway. So you're gonna start at the very bottom with a solid piece. And if you are wanting extra length on your jacket, you would remove this part. Sometimes this part is smaller than this part. And this rib, um, has lots of stretch in it. I do never ever put it on this. I suppose you could, but I recommend stretching it out and then sewing it on the stretched fabric because this tends to draw up and will not, if you see, I cut that straight and now it's, it's very curved because I stretched it and now it's back to being relatively straight. So I come, you could start 
so first if you want your jacket longer you're going to remove this just by cutting it off and then you could add some more fleece to the bottom of this get it in the same color of the sweatshirt but it really doesn't matter because it's probably not going to show at the very bottom this jacket the where it hits me i like where it's covering my hind end and my hips so I don't need any more length on this, but I have seen these full on trench coat long and they are spectacular. So if you wanna do that, go for it. Okay, so I am sewing at the base of this, my first strip. And mind you, this is all one strip. I have, pretend like I have not cut the, the fringe. And basically I'm just gonna stitch on the top of the stitch or top of the strip and I'm gonna try and stay straight but it doesn't really matter I am using this as a guideline so this is gonna be my straight part and I have placed my fabric over that and I can gauge where I'm at with that if you do not get your strip straight it doesn't really matter because it's not gonna you're not gonna it's not gonna be a focal point you're not going to be able to tell it because you're fringing this. So, I have just now added my first strip. Then I'm going to go back and I'm kind of going to cut my fringe. And I am cutting mine about an inch. But you can stagger your sizes. Okay, so this is an inch. You could go an inch and a half. You could go an inch and a quarter. You could go two inches. This is where you are in control. I'm making all of mine the same cut, except maybe when we get to the edge and then it's a partial cut, but still it's a cut. I find that I liked this because of the pattern of the fabric. This is what I chose. I tried to stagger my, I don't know, my slits whenever I sewed on the next strip, but you're really not gonna pay attention to that. And it was too hard to try and focus on that because they end up lining up anyway at some point. So I don't worry about that. So after we have fringed this one, then we're gonna go to the next one and pretend like I have not fringed this one. And then you're just gonna sew. And then after you get done sewing your strip, and again, I'm, I'm kind of using the pattern of my fabric to gauge where I put my fabric here before I stitch it down. And there's a pretty good gap in here. Let's see how big my gap. Three fourths of an inch. You could actually put this closer and make it more dense. If you do, you're gonna need more fabric. To start off with, I'm a plus size. You're gonna need more than three yards of fabric for a plus size sweatshirt probably closer to four. If you start putting these real close together, you're gonna need even more fabric than that. So how much fabric? I don't know. So you will have to make sure that the fabric you select is enough fabric to get you by for the whole sweatshirt. If it's not, the great thing about this is you can, you can order in fabric after the fact and it can only be a yard. And because you're cutting the strips, no one's ever going to know that you piece that in. No one's ever going to know that. Okay, so basically you stagger all of your strips and you kind of stagger them all the same. Because this is at the lower part of my jacket, I didn't need warmth there, so I didn't bother. So all of these are about the same distance apart. And then I've went in and I've cut up cut my fringe and I'm all the way to my armpit of the jacket so my next strip I'm gonna come in and I'm only gonna sew it to the armpit and then I'm gonna forget it and I don't have my other jacket with me but it does not show this fringe it will not show so let's go ahead and sew a strip so I can show you So I am going to line up 
a strip. And if I overhang a little bit on the edge, that's okay because I'll be trimming that off. I'm gonna select needle down and then I'm gonna stitch. Now, my machine <clears throat> automatically knots the thread before I start. You may want to back tack uh, if, if you think it's necessary. This, this edge will end up putting a binding over it so the jaggedness will not show. of the throat of the machine it does get tricky to get all of that wadded up in there so keep that in mind as well and if you're worried about staying straight you could use your walking foot at this time if you so choose um, that may help you stay straight I find my walking foot frustrating on that because my bar will move and so to sew a completely straight line no no one's ever gonna see it so it's it's fine so you can if you get it a little wonky it's totally fine stop right at the seam and this is where you're gonna have to back up okay I locked my stitch and I did not pre-cut my, my strip I still have plenty of length on this so that's what we're gonna do next with the needle cut my thread Incidentally, you're going to use a bunch of thread for this, so I recommend having a brand new spool. Alright, sorry I keep hitting the camera. Alright, now we're going to come and we're going to make our cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Because this was ripped, it's a little curled on the edge. And notice I'm just cutting about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch away from that. You can go all the way up to that and it'll be fine. And the reason why I am making this is because I don't want to be cold this winter and my other jacket has had it. Yes, it's still warm, but it needs... I. Don't want I'm I've wore that rag now for a very long time and I don't want to wear it anymore. It's time for new. Again, these cuts don't have to be particular. You could do this with a pinking shear, but it's probably not necessary. And you, your cuts don't have to be perfect either. They can be crooked, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'm to the end of my strip, so I'm just gonna cut it off. So I sewed up to that point. That's all I sewed. Now I have this short strip left over. Let me show you how you use and overlap your strips. And I do not recommend moving on to your next strip, sewing it down until you have this fringed. Otherwise, your other strip will get in the way and you run the risk of cutting that strip. So, we're going to do it the same way. I'm just going to lay this in here. And I'm going to stitch it down. Pay attention. 
extension, you can see the grain of the fabric. That will help you also stay straight and true to where you should be sewing perpendicular to that. If you're not, you'll need to readjust. And notice I have my machine set at full throttle. I recommend full throttle, otherwise you will be sewing on this forever. My first one took about three weeks of my spare time. So this is a project that'll take you a while. The body of the jacket goes the fastest at the bottom. So all of this I've done in a couple nights this week. Okay, I'm to the point where I need to overlap. So I can either choose to go over or under. I'm going to go under and I'm just going to slide my other strip underneath and you don't have to overlap it much. You can butt it up against. I've made a jacket like that. Do what works for you. All right. So that's how you join some kind of your strips when you're sewing. back to the arm hole. Some of you may have problems sewing this. You may need to actually use a ballpoint needle. It just depends on the machine. I'm using a universal needle and it's sewing it fine. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you tuck it under or over. It's going to fray the same way. You can actually overlap it if you want to line up your pattern. You can overlap it more than that. And then you're just going to split your strip, your fringe, just like you did before. And basically, this is how you're going to sew the body. So the front, the back, or both sides of the front and the back. And then when you get to the sleeves, that's different, and that will be another video. So you will need to stay tuned for part two. Um, I'm not sure. I'm gonna try and get to that this week. We'll see. Um, this is fringing nicely. These pieces are long enough that they're gonna curl up whenever I go to wash the jacket. You can also opt to wash your cotton before you install it. You can do that. That's totally fine. Um, if you're worried about shrinkage and what have you, pre-wash it. I did not. That was a step I've done on my other two and I just decided not to do it on this one. So I'm liking how this is looking. Uh, I'm a denim person, jeans all the time, so this is going to usually match anything that I wear. Okay, so here we are up to the neck edge. We're going to treat the neck edge just like we treated this edge. We're just going to place our fabric and sew up to it. But I went ahead and stitched over my collar. I'm not going to do that here. Uh, and I turned under my edge because this was so close. My next strip, I'll start right here and uh, stitch all the way across and then stop here. And then again, I will fill this in and it, it may look strange, but when the jacket gets done, you're not gonna even see it. That's how you finish the top part of the side. And I almost have it done. Okay, I have filled in that little triangle portion and it's a very jagged edge. 
So after I get the back done and it will look the same way, I will go ahead and sew a strip right down the middle over this seam and it will cover that up. And yes, it will look crooked, but again, that, that will be on your shoulder and it's not going to show and once it gets fringed it's just not going to show so i have that all done on the front i tried it on and the denim look is amazing so what is this fabric line let's see i suspect it's old it's moda It's called Serenity by Amy Ellis, and um, I'm not sure why this is Serenity. I think it goes with an Alaska uh, type uh, theme because I bought this on the So Yeah Alaska Bolt sale. So this may go with pan panel panels and such, and that might be why it's called Serenity. Thanks for watching.